Covering Interconnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome back, and we're here live in Las Vegas with Mandalay Bay for the IBM Interconnect 2017. This is CUBE's exclusive coverage with SiliconANGLE Media. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante here all week. We missed our kickoff this morning on day two, and because the keynotes went along with Ginny Rometty, great star, um, star lineup. You had Mark Benioff, the CEO of AT&T, uh, and the CEO of H&R Block, which I love their ad with Mad Men's guy in there. Dave, let's wrap up day two. Um, big day, I mean, traffic on the digital site, ibmgo.com was off the charts and the site just performed extremely well. Excited about that. Also, the keynote from the CEO of IBM, Ginny, really kind of brings the themes that we've been talking about on theCUBE. I want to get your reaction to that, which is social good is now a purpose that's now becoming a generational theme. And it's not just social good in terms of equality of pay for women, which is great, and of course more STEM. It's everything, it's society, it's a global impact. But also, the tagline is very tight. Enterprise strong, has a Boston strong feeling to it. Enterprise strong, data first, cognitive to the core. Pretty much hits their sweet spot. What'd you think of her keynote presentation? I thought Ginny Rometty nailed it. I mean, I've always been a huge fan of hers. I first met her when she was running strategy. And the, you know, the, the question I used to always get, because IBM, 19 quarters of you know, straight declining revenue, how long is Ginny going to get? How long is Ginny going to get? You know, when, is, when is her tenure going to be up? My answer's always been the same. It's long enough to prove that she was right. And I think what she, I, I just, I love her presentation today. I thought she was on, she was engaging, she's, a real pro, and she stressed the innovation that IBM is going through. And, and this was the strategy that she laid out, you know, five, six years ago, and it's really coming to fruition. And it was always interesting to me that she never spoke at these conferences, and she didn't speak at these conferences because the story was not great. You know, it was coming together, you know, the, 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 the big data piece or the analytics piece was not So you think baked. she didn't come to the events because the story wasn't Yeah, tight. I do. I think she, she was not prepared. That's ready. not a fact. You just she believe was, that. No, this is my belief. She, that they, she was not ready to showcase you know, the greatness of IBM. And I said, I said uh, about a year ago, I said, you watch. This whole strategy is coming together. You are going to see a lot more of Ginny Rometty than you've seen in the past. You started to see her on you know, CNBC much more. We saw her at uh, the Women in Tech Conference at the Grace Hopper Conference. We saw her at World of Watson. And now we, we see her here at Interconnect. And she's very good on stage. She's extremely engaging. I thought she was good at World of Watson. I thought she was even better today. And then a couple of notable things. Took a swipe at, at both AWS and maybe a little bit of, at, at, at HPE. I'm not so sure. If it, they, they worry about HPE. Sam Palmasano, before he left on a Wall Street Journal interview, said, I don't worry about HPE, they don't, they don't invest in R&D, I worry about Oracle. But nonetheless, <laughs> she said, it's not just a new way, cloud is not just a new way to deliver IT, right? That's kind of the, the Amazon, you know, Not way, HPE. Right, and certainly new way, new way of, you new, know, style new, of new style of IT is, is, is Meg's line. She also took a swipe at Google, um, basically saying, look, we're not taking your data to inform some knowledge graph that we're going to take your IP and give it to the rest of the world. We're going to protect your data, we're going to protect your models. They're really making a, a strong statement in that regard, which I think is really important for CIOs and, and CDOs and CEOs today. Thoughts? I agree. I, first of all, I'm a big fan of Ginny. I always kind of question whether she came. I never put it together like you intuitively around her not seeing the story, but you go to all the analyst things, so I think, I think that's legit. I would say that I would buy that uh, uh, argument. Here's what I like. I mean, the three, her sound bite is enterprise strong, data first, cognitive to the core. It's kind of gimmicky, but it kind of hits all their points. Enterprise, um, uh, uh, strong is core in the conversations with customers right now. We see it on theCUBE all the time. Certainly Google Next was one event we saw this clearly. Having enterprise readiness is not easy. And so that's a really tough code to crack. Oracle and Microsoft have cracked that code, so has IBM of their history. Amazon is getting faster into the enterprise through some of the things they're doing. Google has no clue on the enterprise. They're trying to do it their way. Um, so you have kind of different dimensions. So that's the enterprise, very hard to do. Table stakes are different than having pure cloud native all the time, 100%. Lift and shift, rip and replace, whatever you want to call it. Data first is compelling because they have a core data strategy analytics, 
but I thought it was interesting that they had this notion of you own your own data, which implies you're renting everything else. So if you renting everything else, infrastructure and, and, uh, and facilities and reducing the cost of doing business, the only thing you really got is data highlighted by blockchain. So blockchain becomes a critical announcement there. Again, that was the key announcement here at the show, was blockchain. IOT kind of a subtext to the whole show, but it's supported through the data first. And finally, cognitive to the core is where the AI is going to kind of be the, the shiny, sizzly marketing piece with, hi, I'm Watson, I'm going to help solve your health problems. Kind of showing the futuristic aspect of that. But under the hood there is machine learning, under that is the real analytics uh, algorithms that they're going to integrate across their business, whether it's line of business in verticals, and they're going to cross-pollinate data. So I think those three pillars, she is a genius in strategy because she can hit all three. What I just said is a chock full of strategy and a chock full of execution. Well, I mean, if they could do that, they will have a great run. So I go back to Palmasano's statement uh, before Ginny took over, and it was a very candid interview that he gave. Um, and, and as I say, you, you know, you look at when he left IBM, it was, you know, this next wave was coming like a freight train that was going to completely disrupt IBM's business. So it was a, it's been a long you know, turnaround and, and they've done it with sort of tax rates and stock buybacks and you know, all kinds of financial, you know, engineering that have held the company's stock price up and, and, they've done, and, and cash flow has been very strong. And so now I really believe they're in a good position. You know, to get critical for a second, yes, there's no growth, but look who else isn't growing. HPE's not growing, Oracle's not growing, Dell's not growing, Cisco's doesn't, not growing, Microsoft's not growing. The only two companies really in the cartel that are growing, showing any growth really, are Intel, you know, a little bit, and SAP. The rest of the cartel is flat. <laughs> you know, to yeah. down. Well, they got to get you into know. new markets. I mean, the thing is, new market penetration is interesting. So, blockchain could be an enabler. I think it's going to be some resistance to blockchain. My gut tells me that, but the uh, innovative entrepreneurial side of me says, I love blockchain. I would be all over blockchain if I was an entrepreneur, because that really will change the game on identity and value. Uh, and all that great stuff, that's a good opportunity to take the data in. Well, the thing I like is IBM is making bets. I mean, big bets, blockchain, quantum computing, we'll see where that goes, cloud, you know, clearly. We could talk about, you know, you said it <laughs> at Interconnect like two or three years ago, well, you know, SoftLayer is kind of hosting. True, but Bluemix, the investments, Well, they open sunsetted source. SoftLayer, it's now all Bluemix. Yes, right, well, yeah, so, but anyway, the, the, the two billion dollar bet that they made on SoftLayer has allowed them to go to clients and say, we have cloud. Watson uh, and AI, analytics, you know, IOT. These are big bets, which you know, I think are going to pay off. Um, you know, we'll see what, if quantum pays off in the near term. We'll see about blockchain, but I think a lot of the bets that they're yeah. making are going to pay off, so Spark, et cetera. So let's talk about the Cube interviews, Dave. What got your attention? I'll start uh, while you think of some good from your notes. I loved uh, Willie Tejada, I've talked about this. They're putting together these cloud journey um, pieces, which, it's not a best practice, it's not a reference architecture, but it's actually showing the use cases of people who are taking a cross-functional journey of architecting cloud solutions. I love the, um, the quantum computing uh, conversation we had with, believe it or not, the tape person. Right? <laughs> so, from the tape DS, uh, uh, whatever it was, DS800 uh, or, what's yeah, it? DS8000. DS8000. The, the storage um, engineering team. But in terms of key points, um, modernizing IOT relevance was a theme that popped out at me and it didn't come out directly. You start to see IOT um, um, be a proof point of operationalizing data. Let me explain. IOT right now is out there and people are focused on it because it's got real business impact because it's either facilities, it's industrial, or customer connected of some sort. That puts the pressure to operationalize that data and I think that flushes out all the you know, cloud washing and the data washing people who are, don't have any solutions there. So I think the operationalizing of the data with IOT is going to force people to come out with real solutions. And if you don't, you're gone, right? So that's, <laughs> you're dead. The cultural issue is interesting. Trust as a, uh, a, a now a table stakes in the equation of whether it's product trust, operational trust, and process trust. And that's something I saw very clearly. Um, and of course, I'm, I always get excited about DevOps and cloud native, as you know, and some of the stuff we did with uh, data as an asset from the chief uh, data architect. I mean, a couple I would add from yesterday, Indiegogo was, I thought, a great you know, case study. And, and then Mohamed Farouk talking about cloud brokering, 
you know, 60% of IBM's business is still services. <laughs> so <laughs> service is very, very important. And I think that when I look at IBM's big challenge, to me, John, it's to you know, take that deep industry expertise that they have that competes with Accenture and ENY and Deloitte and PwC. Can you take that deep in industry expertise and codify it in software and transform into a more software-oriented you know, company? That's what IBM's you know, doing, trying to do anyway, and challenging. To me, it's all about differentiation. IBM has a sub substantially differentiated cloud strategy that allows them not to have to go head to head with Amazon, even though Amazon is a huge factor. And the last thing I want to say is, it's the, what IBM calls the clients, it's the customers. <laughs> they have a logo slide, they bring up the CEOs of these companies, and it's very, very impressive, almost in the same way that Amazon does at its conferences at AWS. They bring up great customers. IBM brings in the C-suite. They're hugging Ginny, you know, it was a hug fest today. Benioff up on stage. It was a pretty impressive, you know, lineup of partners and customers. And I didn't know AT&T and IBM were that close. That was a surprise for me, and seeing uh, the CEO of AT&T up there really teased it out. And I think AT&T is interesting, and Mobile World Congress, one of the things that we covered at that event was the over-the-top telco guys got to get their act together, and that's clear that 5G and wireless over-the-top is going to power the sensors everywhere. So the IoT on cars, for instance, and life, it's going to be a great opportunity for the telcos to finally get a business model. So it's interesting to see his, uh, his view of digital services from a telco standpoint. The question I have for AT&T is, are they going to be dumb pipes? Are they going to actually move up the stack and add value? Interesting to see who's the master in that relationship, IBM with Cognitive or AT&T with and, the pipes. And, and, and you know, you're in Silicon Valley, so you hear all the talk from the Silicon Valley elites, oh well, you know, Apple and, and Amazon and Google and Facebook, much better AI than, than Watson. I don't know, maybe. But IBM's yes. messaging, okay, so yes, <laughs> fine. But IBM's messaging and positioning in the enterprise to apply their deep industry knowledge and, and, and bring yeah. services to bear and solve real problems and protect the data and protect the models, that is so differentiable and that is a winning yeah, but strategy. Dave, everyone is Despite doing, the technical Anyone advantages. is doing serious AI attempts. AI, first of all, is a whole bastardized definition. It's really machine learning that's driving it and data. Anyone who's doing any serious direction to AI is using machine learning and writing their own code. They're doing it on their own before they go to Watson. So Watson is not super baked when it comes to AI. So what I would say is, Watson has libraries and things that can augment um, traditional custom built AI as a kernel. Our 13 year old guest, Tad May, was on. He's doing his own custom stuff, then bring it to Watson. So I don't see Watson being a mutually exclusive Watson or nothing else. Watson right now has a lot of things that adds to the value, but it's not the holy grail for all things AI, in my opinion. The innovation is going to come from the outside and meet up with Watson, that's well, to me and, is, and, uh, is and the formula. Going back to Mohammed Farouk yesterday, he made the statement, something roughly, don't quote me on these numbers, I'll quote myself, for every dollar spent on technology, $10 is going to be spent on services. Yeah. That's a huge opportunity for IBM and that's where they're going to, they're going to make Watson work. Yeah, I mean, if I'm IBM and Watson team and uh, I'm an executive there, an engineering lead, I'm like, look it, what I would do is target the fusion aspect of connecting with their customers' data. And I think that's what they're kind of teasing out, I don't know if they're clearly saying that, but I want to bring my own machine learning to the table or my own custom stuff, because it's my solution. If Watson can connect with that and handshake with the data, then you got the governance problem solved. So I think, you know, Seth, the CDO, is kind of connecting the dots there, and I think that's it's still unknown, but that's the direction that I see. And services are, remains critical because of the complexity of IBM's portfolio, but you know, complexity has always been the friend of services. But at the same time, IBM's got to transform its services business and become more software-like, and that is the, the winning formula. And then, you know, at the end of the day, from a financial perspective, it, to me, it's cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. And this company is still a cash flow So cow. the other thing that surprised me, and this is uh, something we, we could kind of end the segment on, is IBM just reorganized. So um, that's been reported. The, the, the games, the tape people shifted a little bit, but it's still the same game. They kind of consolidated the messaging in a little bit, but I, I think the proof point is that the traffic for on the digital side for this show is 2X World of Watson. Um, the, the lines to get in the keynotes yesterday and today were massive, so there's more interest in Interconnect than World of Watson. And Amazing, we just isn't did. it? Well then that was a huge show, so what that means is there's, this is hitting an interest point. Cloud and data coming together, and again, I 
said it on the intro on yesterday, IOT is the forcing function. That to me is bringing the big data world, we were just at Strata Hadoop at our event at Big Data SV, that's not Hadoop anymore, it's data and cloud coming together, and that's going to be hitting IOT and this cognitive piece, so I think certainly it's going to accelerate. My and opinion. IBM's bringing in some outside talent, look at Harriet Green, came from, from Thomas Cook, Michelle Peluso, you know, marketing chops, and they sort of shuffled the deck with some of their larger businesses. Um, you know, put Arvind Krishnan in charge, brought in David Kenny from the weather company, moved Bob Picciano into to, to the, the cognitive systems business. So as you say, shuffling things around, still a lot of the same players, but you know, sometimes the organization By the way, we forgot to talk about Don Tapscott who came on, my favorite Another highlight, yeah. of the day. Um, Blockchain Revolution book, we interviewed him. Check out his book, Blockchain's going to be great. Tomorrow we've got a big lineup as well. We're going to have some great, great interviews all day, going right up to 5.30 tomorrow for day three coverage. This is theCUBE here at the Mandalay Bay for IBM Interconnect 2017. I'm John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Stay with us tomorrow, join us tomorrow Wednesday for our third day of exclusive coverage of IBM Interconnect 2017. Thanks for watching. <laughs>